Blocksters, welcome to The Blockchain Hustler, a show where we talk to the leading founders, creators, celebrities, and disruptors who are hustling in Web3. Today's guests are David Biner and Jay Stolar, the co-founders of Hume. Hume is a Web3 entertainment company born in the metaverse. Hume blends music, digital identity, and storytelling to develop virtual music artists, or what they call metastars. Hume's first metastar is Angel Baby, who is the most famous fluff in fluff world and has performed live at Art Basel and South by Southwest. Hume recently announced a Series A funding round of $11.7 million led by TCG Crypto, Winklevoss Capital, G Money, Cooper Turley, and Alla Black. David's background is in product strategy, having worked for major media companies including Comcast, NBC, and MGM and he ran a crypto advisory firm until 2019. Meanwhile, Jay is a gold and platinum award winning songwriter and producer who has written songs for top artists, including Selena Gomez, g Easy, and Demi Lovato. David and Jay, thank you so much for joining us on the Blockchain Hustler today. Good to be here. Thanks for having me. Here. Wow, that was incredibly succinct information about who we are. <laughs> you read it wonderfully too. That was great. Thank you. I appreciate it. Well, I wanted to fit everything in because what you guys are doing is very impressive and you have obviously very impressive backgrounds. And congratulations on your funding round, first of all, and all of the success you've had with Hume and Angel Baby. It's all extremely exciting. Um, I first want to dive into Metastars, though. These are the virtual music artists that Hume is developing. Can you just tell me what they are for people who don't know? And why are they the future of music? Good question. Um, so what is a Metastar? A Metastar is a fully 3D virtual artist. So think of your favorite 3D animated character, whether it's like The Incredibles or from Toy Story or another epic Pixar movie or not Pixar at all, but fully 3D animated, comes to life on social media able to release music on every platform imaginable, Spotify, all of them. And also um, just being alive on TikTok. It is a fully existent virtual artist. Yeah, uh, in, and in our world, and part of why we call them Metastars, like they are native to the metaverse and native to this Web3 world, but able to cross between the traditional world and Web3. In a lot of ways, we talk about Metastars as truly like the gateway between both worlds, because you can be 12 years old and see a TikTok of Angel Baby dancing and be like, oh, my God, I love this. And then you can go show it to your cousin who is really into Web3 and your cousin's like, you know that you can go and have a human genesis and make a decision on Angel Baby's next single on chain. And the 12 year old's right. like, what's a chain? And the cousin's <laughs> like, I'm loving this conversation. Let's talk about it. So you really get to have this bridge between, you asked why is this the future right. as we head more into virtual worlds and virtual experiences and hybrid virtual worlds and AR, they're just gonna become more and more of a need and also more and more tools that allow you to have an avatar version of yourself. So within within a few years, it'll it, within 10 years, definitely, but within a few years, it'll get to a point where first we we're like, cell phones are weird, but now it'll be like, oh, let's go meet for our virtual meeting. Um, you'll see my avatar, uh, X54 will be there <laughs> and you yeah. know who it is. So having this whole world of virtual artists and meta stars is, is where we're leading. The other piece of it, is you know you look what's the most popular form of entertainment on planet earth right now and it's gaming and it's not even it's not really close at this point and when you think about the fact that there are hundreds of millions of people interacting in fully virtual spaces with their own virtual characters like those people are going to grow up and they're going to be they already are grown up because a lot of adults play games at this point too including myself but um, the idea that you're going to have a virtual being that can be fully accepted at the same level as Justin Bieber or Drake, we're not far off from that in the same way that 
you know, the most engaging media platforms were once TV and movies. And now people are still doing that, but also in video game worlds where everything is 3D generated, really. Right. Yeah. There's so many facets to this from like the AI perspective, the gamification, the music. Um, I want to dive into kind of the music side of it. The traditional record labels, as we know, are not built for Web3. And, you know, the industry is filled with politics. And you guys have talked about how that can limit the connection between the artist and the fan. And we know that in Web3. And we're just seeing more and more real life music artists using NFT technology to redefine and take control of that fan artist relationship. But it's so interesting how Hume has taken it even farther to build a world of these metaverse native virtual artists and just the platform that you're building as well that uses NFTs to establish that innovative like fan to artist relationship. My question is why is it important for you to create a world of these metaverse native virtual artists? Like, did you have an aha moment where you realized that there was a gap that needed to be filled in the Web3 music industry? <laughs> um, I'll take the beginning of that one. I wouldn't say that we felt there was a gap in the Web3 music industry because it didn't exist when we started doing this. But this really came out of like two best friends. David and I have known each other for um, more than a decade now. We went to NYU. And David was watching me and my world write and produce for other artists. And I was watching him grow in the crypto world. And as I started to have, I'll play it kindly, but just be a bit frustrated with certain structural elements of the music industry as a writer and a producer, both financial and creative. And David started to see that people like myself create whole sonic worlds and artistic worlds for artists. The, I believe the comment was like, digital currency is here, digital people and virtual people are next. And this was around like 2016. Um, and I always say it, it was like two kids starting a band in Ohio and their parents being like, yo, you guys are making a lot of noise down there, like shut up. Cause we were in our apartment in Brooklyn and we'd be like doing character voices and brainstorming on digital assets on the blockchain and talking really late at night and really early in the morning. Um, and just became fascinated by this concept. And at that time, it was just way, way, way too early. Um, mm -hmm. And we were offered a couple deals, one from a major record label who just didn't quite understand the whole concept of how expansive this can be and how you can innovate the relationship between fans and artists and that it's not just about having um, it's not just about having virtual IP that you own and you can continue to grow. It's about creating relationships and experiences between the meta stars and fans that they'll remember for the rest of their lives. And as we started to see these virtual artists come, one of the biggest challenges was just story. And mm -hmm. if, you, if you take a 10,000 foot view at Hume, you have part of Hume is this whole world of meta stars and each of them with different genres of music, but they're all from, they're all part of the same story. You know, Angel Baby came here from the year 3045 where they were escaping the Zani Republic and they lost the love of their life, Cleo, who's another meta star. And there'll be others that you'll get to know more and more, but they're all part of an expansive franchise that can grow like Star Wars or uh, Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter or the Hunger Games, whatever it is. Um, but that we call it like it's in reverse where I could tell you there's an artist called Tony and you love Tony and Tony went on tour with Justin Bieber. And a year later, Tony's like, you know what, everyone, it's time for you to really know who I am. My name is Tony Stark. I'm Iron Man. Here's my biopic. But you already love Tony for being an artist. So you get to have this whole world where you're living with the meta stars and you're growing with them and you love them. Um, but then as a fan, and David, maybe you could talk more towards this, you have a platform where you can interact and engage in the experiences with the artists and with the meta stars in ways that you've never been able to do before. Yeah, the, the part that was like, once we got, you know, 
virtual artists, we knew that there was a place there. We knew that there would be a way for it to interact with Web3, but the like aha moment there was seeing like the way people were using NFTs, like NFTs are media. NFTs should be fun. For us, it was like, how do we create NFTs that drive and unlock a fan experience? And for us, that was, you know, because we, because Angel Baby is a meta star that provides and has this deep backstory, provides a way for NFTs to be something that let you get unreleased tracks and be able to like hear those tracks before everybody else. And in the case, we just did this two weeks ago, vote on what the next single should be. And now as a fan, you're like part of this world. You're choosing what music's coming out. You know what the like unreleased track was that nobody else has ever heard, but you heard it because you were able to sign into the spot and listen to it through because you had the NFT that let you get there. That was the part where we were like, NFTs can be a lot more than what a lot of them were in 2020 and 21. Yeah, well, and David says this a lot, like the word won't even be used. Right. So, you know, in the future, it's just going to be um, the way you're the way you're interacting. Mm -hmm. And just to add it for Angel Baby's sake, who one day we'd love you to meet um, mm -hmm. when this decision was made. You know, like David and I met Angel Baby when they came through the cyber gate from the year 3045. All these decisions were made on songs that Angel wrote coming out of the cyber gate. And in order to defeat the Zani Republic, we need to make decisions in the spot together. So like, if you zoom out on what I just said, it's mm -hmm. not just about voting, it's not just about a mechanism, it's about an experience and being part of that story. It's really mm -hmm. bridging the gap between music and story and technology. Right, yeah, I wanna dive so much more into the narrative behind Angel Baby and why that's so important. But before that, just thinking about Angel Baby as an AI, obviously there are always just countless music artists trying to get their music heard in real life and like build a fan base. My question is, and I'm just curious, like what feedback have you received from real life artists and the Web3 community and the music industry overall when it comes to the creation of virtual artists? Because like a meta star, like Angel Baby is technically AI. And I'm sure that can be difficult for some people to maybe believe in or relate to. And especially in comparison to traditional music artists, maybe people who are newer to Web3. What's been the feedback that you've been receiving? So Angel Baby is virtual um, and they are like fully 3D and all of that gets created like that. But Angel Baby is not an AI in the sense of like, we're, you know, it, it, this music isn't AI generated. Angel Baby's movements aren't AI generated. Um, going back to like Jay's background as a songwriter, you know, Jay was writing music with tons of, four tons of artists, Selena Gomez, g -Eazy, Demi Lovato. And part of it was like, well, what's the difference between teams of songwriters writing for those artists or teams of like those teams writing for Angel Baby or other virtual artists that we have. So in that sense, like Jay, maybe you can speak more to like how the industry has reacted to like writing or like working with uh, a team that creates these virtual artists. But uh, for us, like, yeah, Angel, there's not, we don't have like AI tech, maybe in the future we'll build a AI fueled uh, Metastar, but mm -hmm. not, not yet. Okay. Yeah. So there's a team behind Angel Baby kind of controlling what they're doing. I wouldn't use the word controlling necessarily. I would think of it more as there's a group working together to develop and imagine the life of Angel Baby with Angel Baby together. It's, okay. To keep it, to keep the answer really simple, I think on the industry side is four years ago, everyone was very, very skeptical. And there was a lot of pushback. Um, mm -hmm. Six years ago, there was even more pushback. Two years ago, it started to open up. Mm -hmm. Now, everybody wants to talk about it. So it's, uh, I think people are starting to see that there is a ton of opportunity for creatives in this world. And there's also huge, huge opportunity to grow on the IP side, on the tech side, and just pure entertainment. Mm -hmm. 
Absolutely. Yeah, no, that makes sense. The conversation has definitely changed since 2016. Mm -hmm. um, and people are very excited about it. And I'm excited to see what has to come for Angel Baby. Um, yeah, it's really exciting. And on the kind of music industry side of things, Hume is becoming kind of a driving force in many ways, but in this next evolution of the music business, obviously you're taking a different approach from the traditional um, business because you are paying your songwriters upfront for their contributions. How is Hume using Web3 to ultimately shortcut the traditional music industry's limitations, would you say? <laughs> Can I position something that you then answer, David? Because I think David says this really well a lot. It's not like, oh, crypto came and it took over all finance. And that's what it was. It was like, now you have a new vertical and a new right. world that comes in and you still have that other world. This is, that's not what this is. It's not like, oh, there's entertainment and Web3 comes in and demolish entertainment and now new entertainment. You know, that's not what it is. It's more that it's creating new opportunities and a new vertical. Um, and David, you could speak to that better than me, but. Yeah, I think there's like, there's two parts to it. I do think the web three part is, I guess what Jay is getting at is like, I think more and more, you're gonna see media companies and media franchises and anything that has to do with entertainment or media using whether they call it this or not like the community part of web3 is becoming more and more powerful and it will influence things that don't even look like web3 and we're already starting to see that um in the same way that i think maybe cryptocurrency didn't like come in and own everything um and it's not like we're all using bitcoin and ether to transact at places now but a lot more people own either of those now Mm -hmm. And a lot more people than before think think about what it means to, you know, own a currency that is censorship resistant and that you truly own and can prove that you own in a digital way. So I think this is going to, you know, now with NFTs and Web3, we've started to see the like entertainment version of this growing and we're going to have a world where, yeah, it's like. I guess like there was radio and then there was TV and we're still listening to a lot of radio, but like TV came in and it exists and it is like big and it's all over the place. So I think, you know, we'll see more and more, you know, you'll be watching a TV show and there'll be some type of NFT collection connected to it, or you'll be listening to an artist that's not a Hume Meta star. And there will be like some version of a music NFT that you can own and get on their, you know, when you go to their live show, um, it's all coming. Yeah. yeah. You can see them bridging. Like I saw Billie Eilish announced another date um, somewhere here in Los Angeles and Tom Windish, who's Billie's booking agent, is one of our advisors. And the first thing, I don't think I told you this, David, but Billie is like some type of first you know, core super fan, go and make sure you purchase this type of membership and you can get early access to the tickets. And then you're seeing like Lil Nas X on TikTok, like which of my sh songs should I, do you guys like? You know, you're, this is, this is like Morse code days of what is to come. And we're right. starting to see them like bleed into each other and hopefully that we can, continue to set trends and like you were saying with like paying songwriters and giving songwriters an nft of a song that they're a part of and them really getting to not only be able to explore and be creative and imaginative because of what the metaverse and worlds of meta stars open up for you as a creative but also financially to be treated differently maybe hopefully that will set a trend and that will disrupt you know, little things. It's not, it, it all starts with small steps. Mm -hmm. So true. It is very interesting to see it trickle into the mainstream every day. And obviously Web3 is growing at an incredible pace. Um, and I know it's so important with these virtual characters to craft the stories because they are virtual. It's important for 
us as humans to be able to connect with them to be to want to interact um and you did say that like the backstories of these other virtual influencers that we have seen that are out there um may be a bit shallow and they certainly seem shallow in comparison to something like angel baby's story so for hume's meta stars why is that storytelling just beyond just the music beyond the performances why is their backstory and narrative so important mm, it's a great question um and to clarify there are a lot of virtual artists who are who are doing a, a great job um first of all angel baby's real David and I met Angel Baby in the Angeles Forest in August of 2021. But if we take a look at it and analyze it, like if you, what's an artist that you really like that you'd go to a concert for? Oh, I'm a big Ed Sheeran fan. Okay, so you go to an Ed Sheeran concert um, and you go to an Ed Sheeran concert tomorrow. There are all kinds of things you know about Ed Sheeran that are going on in your subconscious as you're watching him play Shape of You that you're not thinking about. Like part of you probably knows, well, he's British and I know that he worked really hard and he slept on people's couches and he plays by himself. And I know that he has a kid and he's put out this many songs and he's married and blah, 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 blah. Right. All this stuff is like on autopilot in your brain. And when you hear a lyric or a melody from that song, it affects you and you resonate with it because of all these authentic truths that you know. That is just like baseline humanity. Right. So that needs to exist. And it's why when we fall in love with great characters in movies and TV shows, it's helpful to know like, who are they? Where do they come from? How are they born? It's like every single Disney movie in, in within most of them within 10 15 minutes you see that the hero's parents or one of their parents has died mm -hmm. and now you have a whole new relationship with that character throughout the rest of uh, the rest of the movie so that same thing applies here like by the time you're hearing an angel baby song right now when all gold spaceship mints on monday and then you hear it um a week later you know that Angel Baby came here from the year 3045. They lost the love of their life, Cleo. They're alone. The Zani Republic has killed so many of their friends and family. And the only thing they care about is rebuilding the Hume Collective here to stop that from happening in the future. That's why they're making music. That's why they're talking to you. That's why they care. And then you go and listen to the song. It's like, it, a lot of times it can just be the tip of an iceberg floating. You need mm -hmm. to have the whole iceberg. Um, so yeah, that's why stories arguably the most important part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's beautifully said. And I'd love to just hear both of your guys' predictions, um, for the future of a virtual artist, future virtual influencers, when it comes to entertaining us, inspiring us, guiding our purchasing decisions, working with brands, like what do you see coming up next? I don't know if this is what's coming up next, probably a few iterations until we get there. But I think whenever and whoever figure, whether it's like the Apple headset or someone comes out with glasses or a contact lens, like whoever figures out the big AR unlock, I don't know if it's five years from now or 10 years from now, you're going to be sitting there and you're going to be like, you know, cooking dinner and having a glass of wine and you're going to be like, you know, Kind of wish Angel Baby was right here, like doing a full on show while I cooked. I'm kind of bored. I don't want to listen to a podcast. I don't really want to watch a show. Like, I mean, like, get my AR lens working, Angel Baby show. And now, like, Angel Baby's doing a full on show in your living room, like with lights, like, Angel Baby's rapping there. They've got cool clothes on, and you're just like, cooking dinner while Angel Baby is doing a full show right next to you. Um, that is not what's next, but that's what's, I really think that's coming at some point. Mm -hmm. And maybe if you have certain NFTs, you get to choose which songs, it unlocks certain songs from the show that you're allowed to like have now playing live in your living room. Yeah, that would be epic. Jay, what are your thoughts? The one that comes to mind is and what I'm really excited about is as animation tools 
become more and more simple to use in the way that like really what changed music was the fact that you no longer had to have like a six figure paywall in order to make a high end record. Like it was really, really hard to have a home studio in the seventies and eighties and nineties. You could, but very few people did. And then once all the digital audio workstations like Logic and Pro Tools and now Ableton, Studio One and blah, 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 all became so, so easy to use. You have producers like Phineas who like started producing music at whatever he was, eight or 10 or 12, or there's an artist called Melv who's done a bunch of really cool Web3 stuff. And I've worked with him. I think he started at 10. There's a kid named Miles on Instagram right now who started at five and he's producing songs at five. And it's because the technology makes it so much easier for him to explore as an artist. It can just be right in front of his face and, and he can grow. So once that starts happening with animation and tools to create an avatar of yourself, and you have artists who have been working with avatar animation tools and music tools since they're like five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now they're 15, now they're 20. There is going to be a whole, there are going to be different types of virtual artists and types of meta stars. And there'll be ones like we are uh, developing right now at Hume. And then there'll be a whole other generation that are using our platform at Hume and engaging with their fans and their audience. And I, I think it's, it's been a long time since we've seen like a totally new type of artist. Mm -hmm. When the Beatles showed up on the Ed Sullivan show, it was new. When like Elvis showed up for the first time, it was new. When Skrillex showed up, that was new. Madonna showed up, that was new. Even Billy, Lil Nas X was new, but they're all like, they're all human. <laughs> um, once we see a new type of expression from a human, it's going to be really cool. There, there's, a, there's a whole new world coming. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Can you tell me about the Hume Genesis NFT? Um, I want to hear a little bit about that. Like what access does it give to holders and how do they gain direct access into Angel Baby or a future virtual artist's music curation process? And how are you fully immersing holders into the artist's narrative? Yeah. So we launched the Hume Genesis in July and there's three tiers. There's a legendary tier, which you can think of as like super VIP tier one, a tier called ultra rare, which is tier two, and then a rare, a tier called rare, which is the third tier. Um, our whole like motivation around NFTs was like, create something that people are gonna be excited about that unlocks a fan experience. So mm -hmm. our NFT doesn't just like live in a silo. And so, I mean, it looks, it looks amazing. Shout out to our creative director and 3D director, Ethan and Mikey, because it's beautiful. But then also you get to actually use it. So we launched our platform called The Spot. Mm -hmm. And the only way you can get into The Spot is if you have a Hume Genesis NFT. If you have a Hume Genesis NFT, you can go into The Spot and you really get to feel like you're on a creative journey with our meta stars. So, you know, I remember like living, you know, when Jay and I were roommates, I know much about the music industry with all these like which singles should this person release and which verse is better should we go with like this version of the verse or this version of the verse or like the hook like we might do the hook this way if we want to like change the production all these things would come up um and i always i was like oh i didn't like this is really cool i get to like hear all this um with the hume genesis to a certain extent like you get to go into this token gated area and now you get to like B, in this case, we did this three weeks ago, like Angel Baby's got these two unbelievable songs, What Happens When We Die in All Gold Spaceship, but we can't release both of them at the same time. And we can't even necessarily release both of them as like lead singles. Mm -hmm. So with your Hume Genesis, you get to go in, you get to preview these tracks, listen to them as long as you want. We saw people were in there on that page for four plus minutes on average, which like, getting somebody's attention for eight seconds is like the gold star these days. Like 
like, oh my God, this eight second TikTok is flying. The fact that people were spending like four minutes was a really cool proof point for us. Um, and each one of those tiers comes with a different level of power. So if you're a legendary, you hold a lot of sway in that, you know, in the spot. Um, ultra rares, slightly less sway, rares the least sway. But they all, they all have a say, they're all getting to be part of this experience. And that's kind of, the tip of the iceberg for us that can be applied to a lot of things outside of song releases. And, you know, I, I could keep going on. I also, I think there's going to be seating in the metaverse, even though everyone's like, oh, it's a metaverse. You're going to be able to like go wherever you want. But at some point, because that's just how society works, there's going to be like sections that are, there are going to be some sections that are like more special than others. Maybe it's not going to be about proximity. But maybe like in some areas, like you get to like fly and like other areas you don't get to fly. And I think we'll see like different iterations of how those those tiers with the Genesis play out in that world. But for now, it's about being part of that journey and that experience. Right. Yeah, you guys have done so much with Angel or Angel Baby has done so much with you already. Um, and I know this is just the beginning for Hume. What is next for Hume coming up? And when can we expect more Metastars to join? So next week, which is the week of the 24th, I don't know when this is airing, um, <laughs> uh, Angel Baby is releasing their next single, which is the first one that was properly voted on by the Genesis holders in the spot. Cool. Um, supply is going to be 300. All Gold Spaceship is... Uh, the, the song featuring Gina the ghost and um, I won't give away what the first half of next year looks like but it's gonna be lots of story you're gonna learn a lot about Angel Baby's life mm -hmm. there's gonna be a lot of music and you're gonna see Angel Baby on more platforms I'll leave it at that <laughs> Incredible. Wow. There's so much to be created and you've already done so much and it's really exciting to see Angel Baby's journey and story and really great music as well. I'm excited for more music, more performances and yeah, David and Jay, thank you so much for joining me on the Blockchain Hustler today. I really appreciate it. Thanks thank for having you. Us. Yeah. I like your logo too. It feels like yeah. Ghostbusters in the best way. Right. <laughs> oh, blockchain hustler. There it is. And where can um, people watching follow you guys and just keep up with all things human angel baby? At we are him and at angel baby. Those are the best places to go. Perfect. Also, if you're a discord person, go to the Hume discord. It's a great yeah. place. And if you don't have a Hume Genesis, I mean, go get one. Hop on that too. Definitely. Join us on the journey. Yeah. Thank you both so much. I really appreciate your time. You got it. Thank you.